vigilate adorate, necitis enim quando tempusit, sicur homo qui predre perfectus reliquit domum suon, et edit servis suis prestatum cuius quoperis, et ianitore precepit ut vigilet. Vigilate ergo, necitis enim quando dominus domus veniat, sero an emeria nocte, an gallicandu an mano. Necum venerit repente, in veniat vos dormientes, quod autem vobistico omnibustico vigilate. Take ye heed, watch, and pray, for ye know not when the time is. Even as a man who going into a far country left his house, and gave authority to his servants over every work, and commanded the porter to watch. Watch ye therefore, for you know not when the Lord of the house cometh, at even or at midnight, or at the cock crowing, or in the morning, lest coming on a sudden he find you sleeping. And what I say to you, I say to all, watch. God of the Father of Light, bless this Advent candle, hurry and send your spirit to us so that, noticed or unnoticed, we may give warmth and light to each person we meet this holy season. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Red Rose, and I would like to first of all wish you a very happy beginning to your Advent season. What we will be doing for the next four weeks of Advent is a Sunday devotion here on my small Advent candle shrine. I wanted to do this because a few of my viewers were requesting some more videos of the Catholic mode, if you will. The order of these videos will consist of readings from sacred scripture and a quick prayer from a little card that came with the Advent candles, followed by a short talk from me to you about the week of Advent we are on, and at the end, the commemoration for the Sunday of Advent in Vespers of the Divine Office. The Advent candles are very important to the season of Advent, and traditionally they each have a meaning. The first candle for the first week. Traditionally, it represents hope, hope or faith, principally hope. A good way to begin our devotion is by reading from this small card. Advent is a time of joyful expectation of the coming of the Lord. It is a time of conversion and renewal, a time of watching and waiting, a time of new beginnings. All of these find expression in the Advent prayer, Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. The heart of the Advent message is to be found in the scripture passages of the Sundays of the season. That message is above all one of hope and peace and joy. It is a message which must filter through the preaching of Advent into our daily lives. How do each one of us prepare for the coming of Jesus into our lives now and in times to come? One of the most beautiful symbols of the Advent season that is used in our liturgy is that of the lighted candle. The biblical image that comes to mind is that of the wise women who carry their lighted candles in expectation of the coming of the Lord. The lighted candle is always meant for us the special presence of Christ. During our Advent season, it has become customary in our church and in our homes to use the Advent wreath for lighted candles as a sign of our watching and waiting in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior. As an alternative to the penitential color of purple, the church has introduced the color blue for the season of Advent. This tradition comes to us from the Church of Toledo, Spain. As early as the 7th century, the bishops grappled with the problems of symbolically separating the seasons of Lent and Advent. In our present day, we must focus not on the penitential theme, Reform Your Lives, but more the hope-filled theme, Reform Your Lives, for the Kingdom of God is at hand. The use of blue 
four, the season has been adopted to distinguish the nature of the season of Advent. It is a vivid way of showing the difference between Advent as a season of expectancy and Lent being a season of penance. The Advent wreath carries with it many rich symbols. The circle represents eternity. A circle has no beginning and no end, just as God's life is everlasting. The evergreen, which is always green, symbolizes life, growth, and hope. The candles signify the time of preparation, a time of looking to ourselves and recognizing the need for the coming of Christ in our lives, and the joy we know, because God loves us so much that he sent Jesus into the world. To aid in your family or parish celebration of Advent, we would like to share with you the following prayers that might be used for the lighting of your Advent wreath each week. The head of each household might pray the prayer, and one of the others light the candle for that week. And the prayer mentioned there is the one that we did a few minutes ago. I have the three violet candles, the rose candle for Gaudete Sunday, the third week of Advent, and in the middle is the Christ candle, the white candle, which is lit on Christmas Eve, and we will have that, that will be the fifth video. And I wanted to give a little lesson on some of the the significance and the relevance of this, of hope and reconciling hope to the, the Mass readings for the first Sunday of Advent. Make one note, I almost exclusively go to the Tridentine Mass, and I pray that the extraordinary form of the Divine Office. So if I am speaking about those things, it is coming from there. The, the Mass readings are actually very, very similar to the readings from the last Sunday after Pentecost. They are from the book of Luke, and they are a parallel reading to the same story from Christ in the Gospel of Matthew. And in the Gospel of Luke, we do not actually hear about Christmas, as you may expect, in the season of Advent. Rather, we hear about the end of the world, about it. the reading is, is an eschatological prognostication about the, the sun and the moon, the stars in the sky, the signs in the sky. And so it does not seem extremely pertinent to Advent or to Christmas, but what is important is that though it is the birth of the, the church, the liturgical year, not Pentecost, mind you, but the birth of the, the, the new liturgical year with Advent, finding its beginning there, the church is actually beginning with, with the end of time. It begins the beginning of the liturgical year with the events of the end of time, and it really brings everything full circle, just like the circle of the wreath. But in fact, it is extremely relevant, very, very revel re relevant. And those are the readings that we did today, which were from Mark. There are many parallels in, in the, the Gospels. And it is all about keeping vigil and watchfulness. That is what Advent is, the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ into this world. And it is, it is incumbent upon Christians to be keeping vigil, to be watchful. Because, as the epistle from St. Paul to the Romans says, it is time to rise from sleep. It is time to be very, very watchful, to rise from sleep, rise from the darkness that was in the light that is to come. But as the wise virgins knew, and as the foolish virgins did not with their lamps, we must be ready for that time. We must not put off what is to be done and what is proper. We must be ready always, and Advent drives home the nail of that message with a stronger hammer, so to speak, than any other season of the year. You will notice also that it is a bit difficult, more difficult for me to actually read because there is much less light with only one candle than there would be with all five candles, as we will see throughout the other weeks. But that is also very symbolic, because with every coming week, we have more light from these candles on our wreath, and it becomes easier to see. We are in darkness now, that is true, but the light of the world is soon coming to us. That is Advent. 
that is Advent, indeed. So the theme of hope as a reason for the preparation and vigil is made manifest in the readings for Mass this week. And if there's one message I can say, it is be watchful, be vigilant as we read, as we read all over, as the time comes. Because when the light of the world is soon coming, we must be ready. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. With a dark and stormy elegance, I am Red Rose, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.